So let me see. Uh, is this working? Yeah, you hear me, no? Yeah, yeah cool, wonderful. So, um, yeah, welcome to my session here, Building for the Editor Experience. Uh, my name is Andreas Saale. I work with uh, Wunderkraut here in Germany. And um, yeah, I'm really happy that so many of you are here for attending my session. And I'm really, uh, uh, on top of that, I'm really, really thrilled that we have so many sessions uh, talking about user experience for the different uh, people like, like developers and site builders and uh, most of all uh, editors and uh, having the talks about the Spark initiative and all that things. And um, also like uh, the session we had before. Uh, anybody attended the session that was in this room uh, right before this one here? Yeah, because it's really nice. It's like it's like having back to back the 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 the, the, the session before uh, was about uh, designing for the everyday um, things. It was more about concepts of design. What can what can go right? What can what can go wrong? About concepts there. So I think this could be a really nice uh, addition to that because this goes into Drupal, and I I want to have a look with you at the things we are doing right now, what we can improve on the editor experience in, in all uh, kinds of areas. Um, there's so many things uh, to talk about in this topic that uh, the session, I held this session before in, in, in Barcelona during the Dev Days and I also held this uh, at the uh, Front End United because this is a topic that concerns uh, a lot of people working in, in different areas uh, with Drupal. Um, but it's, there's uh, quite a few things we, uh, we could cover and talk about. And um, so I will try to do my best and, and give a good overview. But I encourage you to just step in, ask questions while we're doing this. Because I think there's so many things that I will run out of time anyways. So, and I don't want to uh, get in a situation where we don't have time to ask questions in the end. Um, so feel free to come in. It's a topic that concerns us all from uh, different uh, experiences that we have with our clients and with our projects. So just raise your hands, ask questions when you feel that there's uh, something that interests you and we can talk about this. Oh, there's the first one. Can you move the mic a little bit closer so we can hear better actually? Yeah, sure. So is this better? Yes, great, wonderful. So um, as I said, building for the editor experience. So let's, let's see where we're at. First of all, we, we have to see who is an editor, you know, because there's a whole, whole lot of uh, different people working with Drupal. And so let's look at the roles that we have in real life, not these uh, roles for permissions that we might uh, end up with configuration in Drupal, but what are roles in real life? There's content authors, they are creating content, there's editors uh, that are, have to deal with it, was, has, has been created or create content on their own. There's people coming in translating, there's maybe people in, in bigger projects that are just dealing with assets like pictures or videos and all that stuff. So uh, we need to focus on what they want to achieve when they work with Drupal when they try to deal with the content. It's a content management system, and there's people really um, having different tasks they want to achieve, and they don't want to be bothered with all of them, uh, with all the interface that we have there. So this is one of the challenges that we are facing. So let's see. There's these, th these different roles. There's these different people, and you have to, when you, when you do, um, uh, an interface for, uh, for different uh, people that do different things, and behave different, and also for maybe different clients and their, their topics, you have to try to picture them, who they are, and what they're going to do. And, and, and this is a good basis to find out how their interface and their workflows in terms of creating content, managing content, finding, translating, and all that uh, uh, things uh, have to work for them. So, <clears throat> first of all, yeah, it, it, we should set up these roles. We should have, have configure for them. But um, this is the, this is just a teeny tiny step on the way. We should start start from the beginning and test. We test on our user stories. We have to we we go in there, uh, picture what somebody has to do. Not only in the front end, not only while uh, leaving a comment or using the the gallery pictures or 
something like that, but also for the back end, where, uh, where somebody starts his work with a blank page or with a new menu item, and, uh, and another person comes in and tries to con configure something or uh, place some blocks there. So we should really start test early and uh, picture the personas here. And as, as far as the permission system goes, it's not a replacement for a good interface strategy. We have to do a lot of, uh, of configuration there that we um, can um, work with the permissions that the people only see what they have to deal with or only are allowed to, what, uh, uh, to work with the stuff that really has to concern them. But you, you can't just rely on uh, configuring permissions and everything is done because there will be a lot of areas where people would be allowed to do something, but it's not good for them to have so many options. So let's look at that. So um, for really um, finding out what we can do for the, for the editors, we have to uh, picture what, what does an editor really want. And, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is he wants to create pages. The people d think in my website, my, I want to have a page here. I want to have uh, um, a new content there. And I want to have a new menu item. And maybe I want to find and select content or link content, but this is shown already uh, an advanced topic. Or I want to tr translate the text and uh, all these uh, things like that. So, but what do they really think when they approach the task of uh, cr uh, creating and dealing with content? They think in pages. How shall a page look like? What items I want to place there? How is this? Uh, um, uh, how, how can a, a, a user in the front end find the page? And where do I where do I do I place my contents there? So here's a, a, a screenshot that uh, create was a created a long uh, not a long time ago but a while ago. That was the discussion of the usability group that um, led to in this direction what we have now the layouts and blocks uh, initiative. They, w they did an uh, analysis of, or did try to picture of how a normal person thinks. Normally, there's in this uh, there's a link for that. You can read up on that. There's two screenshots. The other one shows how we think. How we think in terms of here's a node, here's a block, here's a pane, here's some navigation. This is a footer area. But um, you know, an editor he looks at the page, and for every everything is content for him. It, it doesn't matter for him it, that this is a slideshow or this is some views output. Everything is, is content, and so he wants to approach this for, like, I want to edit this. So everything is content. I want to go here, add a picture. I want to translate this text, this I have right here in front of me. And maybe I want to an add another item to this list. So how, how can I do this? And we have to um, think and plan for that and build our sites that these tasks can uh, be completed. And another thing is um, we, we always have this mixture of maybe I call them automatic uh, versus manual pages. There's people coming in like for an, uh, a newspaper uh, thing where they say, OK, I have this place. Uh, I think many of, of, of you guys that uh, are, are Germans and uh, know these projects with uh, typo free, there's a lot of thinking in this area. We have a, we have a tree of, uh, of, our, of, our, of our menu and then we want to place some contents there. And this is something that is really similar to uh, the people are thinking, placing, uh, doing manual pages. But on the other hand, we have this great toolbox with Drupal where we can have views and lists and, and all different blocks uh, uh, querying uh, uh, content from the database and presenting it. And this is, uh, this is more of an automatic approach. But it's never you know, separated. You never have a project where everything it gets output by views. And you never have a project where every page is you know, created uh, arbitrary. So yeah? So the question was, uh, if I have a solution for inline editing of all that kinds of stuff. Yeah. No, I haven't. But there's uh, really good approaches, and there's also uh, really good things you can do in this area. Because 
the things start with the little things. If you have a list of, of, of uh, news items with a view, you could just provide uh, with the contextual links that are uh, uh, configurable by, by a programmer, or you could provide a button in the header to add a new uh, content of this type that is, gets listed by this view. And this is one step in the way to just having in this uh, page that I'm looking at to add something. Or um, you could, like I said before, enhance these contextual links to get more um, out of that. And obviously there's a panels and panelizer and the in-place editor, which, which really helps in uh, dealing with these pages, most of them um, tending to be more manually, arbitrarily uh, created together. But still also for these automatic things, you can uh, deal with this. Okay. So, but most of the time we have a mixture, so we have to plan for that, that there will be somebody sitting there and saying, okay, I want to change this. I want to reorder uh, uh, the, the views output that I have here. I want to add something. So we need to find solutions there. So, also what comes up, is there an editing mode? This is somehow drawing the line before, be, be, between um, uh, maybe in-place editing, uh, editing from st starting from the front end and going in in the back end, listing uh, contents, finding content there, editing and hoping that everything gets put out uh, correctly or you know, adding new products in the, in, in, in the repository where all the products live, where, which you can find at the content listing. So, uh, we have to picture for each project and and uh, the users we know that have to deal with this, um, how they cross the line between back end and front end. Is, are there, is there really um, a situation where, we, where everybody can just work in the front end, inline edit? I think, you know, when we um, look at this uh, uh, Spark initiative, it will help uh, a great deal with these um, with these situations where somebody looks at a page and says, I want to uh, edit this. But we have, all, we have to also think about all these other things where we have to find the content and you know, provide an interface for, the, for uh, all types of um, editors. So let's have just a, a, a look at the, at, the, at the thing that we are dealing with with Drupal. There's points where Drupal makes our life harder. We have the, these situations where the chronological order in, in the workflow that an editor has to take is maybe uh, feels a little reverse for a lot of editors. We have, not, we have no, no distinct or not you know, no unique system for structuring content. We can do so many things. We can have uh, taxonomy menus. We can have regular menus where you create uh, manual, manual menu items. We can uh, um, have views, uh, collect stuff. We can order this by, by date. So this, this is a thing where we have many of the, these uh, uh, different approaches. We have to do, deal with that because our editors have to understand that. And sometimes we have a little bit much of an interface because there's so many configuration options and things you can um, change and alter, which is really great, but we have to uh, deal with that for somebody who's not that savvy that we are. And the configuration uh, options are all over the pace, place. So if we look at the, the admin menu, when we have a full site install of a really uh, site loaded with functionality, this is not good for an editor. And the more uh, functionality we add, it, that leads to loss of consistency. As I mentioned before, you have maybe the standard menu and you have a menu block and you have taxonomy menu and you have Drupal blocks and views blocks and views content panes and node blocks and mini panels and all they have uh, a little bit different interfaces and all of them are not really understandable from the first point of uh, seeing them for somebody who is not uh, uh, a techie. But on the other hand, what, um, what, where, where is the, the points where Drupal makes our life easier? We have a framework, we have a great architecture, and we have uh, all these possibilities uh, for, the, for the developers using hooks to alter the stuff that's there. And there's a lot of modules that help us in, in um, making a better interface. And we have a big community that, that we see right now that is really concerned with these topics and tries to work with them in all these different approaches. So, what do you hear a lot? 
is that an interface should be simple and intuitive. That's as easy to say, but we have to you know, implement that. So what we, what we would, might need there is something fast, efficient, and what we should do is avoid uh, confusion and um, have less, as less uh, unnecess unnecessary uh, UI um, as we can do. So that nobody is sitting there and really crying for help, we have to deal with that. So, but do we do that by providing help? There's a lot of projects where people go in, provide uh, huge amounts of documentation, uh, have screenshots annotated with, with arrows and little remarks or uh, do uh, screencasts, with, with which is all is helpful. But maybe as we heard before in the session, um, things should be in the first place as simple as they can be and then you don't have so much work for explaining them. So do, uh, does anybody need help? I think sometimes less help is more and we should approach the things like, you know, guide the people through the tasks they have to do. And we have to do this visually and by structure. And I say, don't think maybe about help text, think more action button. So if we look at a help interface in Drupal, this is really, I, I looked for the worst case scenario, yeah. This is uh, um, advanced help installed and, you know, there's a lot of text if you have time and you're interested, you can read this and it will be helpful because somebody that put it together has really good information for that. But it's normally you need help on the spot or you have to understand something on the spot. <coughs> so let's look at something. This is uh, the interface uh, for um, the main menu, creating menu links. So if you look at that screen, what is the most important action? It's really hard to tell, you know. There's main menu, there's so you save. What, I, what I'm, am I saving here? And there's test page, okay, I can click edit description. And there's this thing, add link. So it's, it's often, we, and we, when we look at our Drupal interface, it's not easy to uh, find out what we, what we have to do next. Or if we look at it, something else, like this is uh, the, the page manager of, of panels, where <coughs> where the interface gets more and more complicated and people really have a hard time to find their way around. I think, I know this is a really hard example because you never would go there and try to uh, root an editor. Some people do this, but you root an editor on this page and say, hey, you have to con configure or create something here. This is really a worst case scenario. But I think you get the, po you get the point there. So what can we do? You know, we need, we, we need to uh, focus on the things and really provide a visual guidance for the people what they have to do next. And this is a small example I took here from this Dollar Shave Club uh, website where, you see where it's really obvious what you would do next. You just do it. And that guides somebody to something. You don't need a help text here. You maybe have these screens here that they explain a little bit, but hey, the next thing maybe apart from watching the video, will be do it. So that leads to the topic, uh, guiding through forms. So about the structure of forms and visually guiding uh, the editors. If they have, if, if we can provide a system where the people know what, this, what they have to do next, um, this will help them greatly to uh, deal with creating content. So this is an example. Um, of a, of a form uh, for a recipe. This is a co was a, a project we did for a cooking community. Um, the German people will be able to read this better. But this is a form for a recipe. And as you see here, there's help when you need it. There's little tool tips where you can, where you can uh, find a help if, if you really get lost in, in the stage of editing that you are. But it doesn't obstruct your, uh, your view from all the rest of the form. This is one thing. Or like here, on, as you can see here, a little bit on the bottom, it tells you how many, how many characters you can put in this field. Or on the, on the other side, uh, there's something for uh, uploading the recipe pictures. And you see instantly, the first picture is a little bit bigger. That will be the promoted picture of the recipe. 
that's really easy to understand for an editor. This is just the small things you can do here. And you see, it started with, uh, with a point one, and this is point two. And so you have, for your um, people working with that, you have a structure where they know, okay, I, I have to complete my tasks somehow, yeah. This will be uh, information about the recipes. You see these groups of things they have to fill in here. Um, this is all structured a little bit so that they know, okay, how can we go the, uh, through this step by step? And finally, um, you see this is the eighth step, so there has been a lot uh, more in between. But by separating this and guiding the people, um, it makes it a little bit easier. And even if you have to deal with these complex things, you know, an, an, uh, an interface uh, cannot be less complex than the task you have to complete. But on the other hand, it mustn't be much harder than this uh, thing you are trying to do. So if you have to coll collect many information, um, the, the people obviously have to do this, but they don't have to you know, uh, be in pain while doing this. But I, it says finally, but are really finally there? I mean, not quite, because there's some questions that we uh, carry around for some years in Drupal. One is this encircled red thing here, the preview button. It, it's German, it says Vorschau, but that means in English it means preview. And obviously that shouldn't be there, because it never worked. Yeah. So this is a thing we have to address. This is also another thing we might be addressing with, like, just save it and go back and inline edit the rest of the stuff that when you see your page and start working there. Or you have to implement something really intelligently to really have a preview. But right now, you're really struggling. Yes? You mean the, the preview of the preview system doesn't uh, work or the preview index doesn't um, In this example, it doesn't work because uh, you, your question was uh, if the preview in this example didn't work yeah. or in Drupal in general. In this example, it doesn't work because it, it doesn't work in, in Drupal in general. Because you get, a, you, you, know, you get a preview, yeah, but you get the preview. As soon as you uh, use an admin theme, you get the preview in the admin theme. And uh, so you never get a real preview on your content if you, um, if you ever used uh, the, the Drupal interface there. You can see how the content is structured. You can see the filtering maybe, you know, because, but, who understands filtering, you know, as an editor. But this is a whole, an, whole another point. But um, you would like to see the preview, how it looks on the page. And there's so many other things coming in with that, like other blocks and other stuff. And there's this other theme that really makes uh, things really different. And an additional editor. What? And an additional block that we edit the And all of that, yes, you're correct. And you said, uh, and an additional edit form, yes. Um, and also, the question arises, we ha I had some ta talks with some uh, uh, colleagues here, and why, why don't we save right away? This is not a question I can answer here either, yeah? but this is because this is a really a Drupal internal, but this is uh, also a thing we, uh, we should think about. You know, if you use Google Docs, you open up a new document, and it gets instantly saved with untitled document, and you can later go in, change this, Obviously, we have a lot of things we're dealing uh, with here because we have required fields and all of that, but hey, that would be a nice thing to have in the future. Just, hey, save. Don't let the users worry about that. Um, clearly, there's a lot of things to, to deal with there because we have like workflows and everything, but yeah, it would be a nice thing. Yeah. Uh, how do I fix that? Oh, no. And then yeah. maybe for a few hours you have a broken front page or something like that. Yeah. That's, uh, you, you, you mentioned the problem, you know, uh, that we might have a workflow and, and different uh, versions of all that stuff. This is in a whole different area again. And I, I strongly encourage that we talk a little bit later, I think, because um, we could talk another two hours about that also. <laughs> but you're perfectly correct. Um, versioning and d dealing with that stuff is also uh, really hard for it because 
it's also a really abstract concept for the, for the editors. You know? They don't want to care about this. So let's go on a little bit. Optimizing node forms. We have seen a little bit about uh, structuring long forms. Um, but also we have this uh, separation. There's might, there might be advanced options or attributes or metadata, like, like having the, the um, page title or the menu item or uh, the description of the meta tags or something we put there for uh, separating this product, product from another product and all of that kind of stuff. And there's one uh, um, really important thing which uh, has a star here, semantic content types. This is also a good approach for making the, the content editor's life a lot, lot easier. We have a lot of these uh, um, content types we, we, uh, we create that have a purpose. So there's, it's, a, it's a product, or it's a news item, or it's uh, a, a gallery, or it's an image, or it's a vid uh, video, and we have, have to really take care about that this is uh, as semantic as it, it can come, so that uh, an editor instantly knows I'm creating this and that will have this output. It's not always easy with these uh, things. We have these arbitrary pages where you have maybe a layout and you would put something there, or you have this basic page. But it's always good to think where are opportunities to give the, the editor a semantic context or to, to build a, a content type that is uh, semantically uh, in, in this area, how he's thinking or how his company thinks. So that will also help him really to um, achieve the desired results much faster. Reduce abstraction. Not, not, not go in there and have an article with like 15 options if this is, I don't know, uh, um, a, a news article or a blog article or, a, or another thing. It always comes down to seeing what you have in, the, in your concept for your client, but this also um, really helps a great deal because people understand these things that uh, are created like in their everyday, in their um, business life a lot better. So how to deal with long forms? We have been, we have been seeing uh, a lot of stuff and what is about configuration and content? You have to think about what the, your interface is used for. We, we, here this screenshot is, uh, is the configuration of the mother, mother, uh, mothership uh, theme that Morton did. For this type of, uh, of input, this might be perfect because you have so many, you, have, you go in there and you have a choice of things, you want to get a go good overview um, of what you want to configure. But for a, f if, you, if you look at this interface with uh, multiple accordions or uh, um, collapsible containers, that wouldn't work for something where it's content, where you want to see everything you have to put in there. So for a, uh, for a, uh, you have to also um, um, think, what are you doing there? Is this, a, is, this a, is this a piece of content? Is this something you have to fill out completely or you, where you have to see all the options? Or is this something where you go in, find something what you want to change and you uh, um, decollapse the, the, the container and go in there, edit this, save, and come back later at any time and find another option you might change. And this is also a thing where you have to uh, really think about that. Not obstructing uh, the, the flow that the people are having or providing something that is, gets and gives you a good overview. So, um, if uh, um, I talked about uh, separating content from attributes or metadata, what I'm doing a lot of times is I'm, I'm building a simple uh, concept where I have like two columns, um, like like you see in, in most in a lot of front ends. We're going in and separate. On the light hand, left hand side, you have all the, the data that might get output on your page. So the editors know, okay, this is my area where I have all this information that leads to the content that gets put out on the site. And on the right-hand side, there's more like the metadata, like, uh, like here it's a product, you can choose in which sector this product uh, has to be placed, like is it publishing, digital business, this was for a, a publishing house, or what type is it, is this more a product or more a service? So you could argue, like I said before, Maybe you should separate this because this for your editor is more simple to have the product and the service. 
that really depends on the use case you're having there. But here, you have, at least you have a separation between the metadata or the attributes and the main data. And so that will help also the user to separate this. You can easily achieve this just by using uh, the field group module and putting in like uh, two open divs, give them a class, and now you have two columns. You don't need to worry about a lot of uh, things you have to do there. And you can replicate this for all your product. I think there was a question in there from behind. No, you answered it. OK, great. So and when you look at that, um, you also have to uh, think about it, what is important. I have this screenshot here that was uh, uh, just a work in progress there. And you see, obviously, there somebody came in and said, OK, uh, um, this is obviously it's important to set the language correctly. Uh, even the label got, got a, um, a more um, uh, important color. And so, but you know, this, is, this might be good, but you, sort, you should sort this, uh, things correctly. If this language switch is so important, put it on the top. You know, make it the, the editors easier to deal with this. Or here, the, uh, on, up on top, it says this is a media content type. So the image, which is obviously the most important part for this uh, media thing here, should also be on top. Why should the date uh, come first, which is maybe the, the second or third important thing we're editing here? So structuring that correctly also helps the editors a great deal of um, completing the form in a timely fashion. So here I put in a, a screenshot where um, a similar concept is uh, what we have right now, which is planned for, uh, for Drupal 8. This, is, uh, this was uh, um, a demo site they, they put up for, for showing this new content edit form for Drupal 8. And also they have a separation what we had in, in the vertical tabs before on the bottom, where it, uh, which was really great because it, it compressed the form a little. But on the other hand, uh, you found out that people really were clicking through all of them to find out what they have to do there. And it was from the placement here not, not uh, as perfect as, as it could be. So they moved it also to a sidebar here. And I think this is a great thing because it doesn't obstruct the, the view on, on the content you're creating here, but also provides an, uh, um, a good uh, uh, attention to the things you also have to deal with, like uh, if the content gets published or promoted and all that stuff. So, yeah, there's a question. I think this is a good combination. The, the question was if the if this uh, you mean collapsible sidebar in that the whole sidebar is collapsing or that you have these collapsible elements in the sidebar. Yeah, the, the, the thing elements yeah. So like it's shown here. Yeah, I think it's 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 a good compromise, you know, because uh, when you have you you get a great deal of uh, um, attention because it's placed at the right top area where you really see the things, but also. Um, it, you, don't, you don't have to see everything. You just know, you know, when you label the things correctly, you, you just ha know when you have to click menu settings. And you just know when you, when you want to go in and deal with the comment settings or the authoring information. So I think this is a good compromise. I think some of the modules will have to see how they can deal with this uh, confined space they are having. And obviously, it needs a, um, a solution for a mobile. But I think it's a good start. So if you can, and you can read up more on the history, there's the links there. And I think there should be a session on, on that too, or it has been, I don't know. So coming back to our interface uh, problems, it's really easy to get confused by an interface with too many controls. Look at this, this is a, this is a, a configuration screen uh, for a custom panel page. And there's so many things, there's so many tabs and buttons and, 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 and vertical tabs and uh, text and everything. Uh, this, is, this is even hard for, for um, a seasoned Drupal developer when he, when he gets there the first time. Because there's so many things to do and it's not really clear what you do there. So you need really time to work on this. But ca can't this be easier? That's our interfaces, you know. Um, have to have to have everything in there, or can we streamline this, this down? 
I don't know if this picture here is the best solution, you know, just having on and off. But we should always, when we do uh, uh, these things and build the sites together, have a look at what we can do there to improve and to move the things away that you don't need to deal with in your role, like I stated before. Because you're having a role that you don't want to configure all if you're an editor. You want to get your job done. So let's look at the same interface uh, with almost the same options. This is the in-place editor for the same page. This is much, much more clear. You have also your layout options, you have your columns, you have your, your, um, your way of adding something new, and you have just a few buttons. You can always go in there and say, hey, we could lose a few of them still, but it's much, much cleaner. You know, you could argue, why, why do you have a button for, for with the cog wheels for the settings, and next to that you have a button for the, for the panel styles? Why don't you edit this in one area? But there's always the case that you argue uh, on, on these things. But if you look at this, this is much, uh, much more clean and much more uh, from comprehensive. And also, you know, uh, looking at, uh, at the needs of an editor, you obviously have to provide him an interface that, uh, that has only the, um, the options that he really needs. So this is an example for an extra menu, but you can also achieve this by doing your, uh, a good configuration of, uh, of all the menu um, access you have for your editor, because they want to have maybe an overview of what they have to do or what they have for content. They want to have an area where they can find their content. They want to deal with the structure. There might be even, even the case that there's, that there's a role that doesn't uh, deal with the structure, and you have another role that, uh, that will do that for, that for them. So you can even reduce this maybe more. And there will be somebody who deals with translation. But hey, the site configuration is something that might not be the thing what, then, what an editor does, does there. So give them a separate menu or try to enhance this that, the, that maybe the admin menu that they're using gets reduced to a, a, a sane amount of uh, menu items that people can use there. And maybe if you get some space back, make it a little bit bigger, the people can click on that a lot easier. And, you know, what I also think would be a good approach is to provide an area. If you, if, you, if you live in the back end as an editor and try to find your content, provide them with an area uh, where they can find the things they have to deal with. That might be something different that another, an asset manager has to deal with and think about what will they do? Will they have to find the content? Will they uh, have to um, uh, configure, uh, add new items for the taxonomy? Place the things there. And uh, this is an example of the, the workbench module that is really known for its workbench moderation, which is also a great thing, but also they bring uh, um, a little um, uh, dashboard area here, which is highly configurable. You can place a lot of uh, different views there and a lot of different stuff. There's uh, there's some other modules that do something similar. There's also a link here for the, the context admin menu that provides you with a, a possibility to um, have custom admin pages, you know, for just people that have to just deal with, uh, with one vocab vocabulary or with two vocabularies of the 20 you have there. So you can provide them um, their own admin pages and uh, just deal with them and not be dealing with uh, other stuff they don't need to do with. Yeah. Mm. Let me see at the time. Okay. So, what also is really important is since we are putting in, uh, most of the time they are putting in content, we have this great system of, of the field UI providing them with fields, but we have to find the right widgets that they can complete their task in a in a way that they don't get uh, really distracted of their task. So finding the right widget, and I also called it the select box from hell, because this is one of the, the interface elements where everybody knows that we have, uh, we have a problem. That's not a Drupal-related problem, and, and we will see that uh, Drupal has a lot of modules that solve the problem really good, but we have to think what are the, the people wanting to how, want, how do the people want to use their select box? So, um, 
as we all know, the problems with the select box is selecting multiple items or you know, uh, finding everything in, 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 in one view. So here's some modules that deal with this uh, in a nice way. There's the multi-select module that provides these uh, two panes where you can uh, move the things around, which is a great concept for you know, seeing what is selected or not. Or this, there's this chosen module that gives you like uh, a combination of, of uh, select lists and, um, and you see the selected items on top there. And there's uh, this module select or other that provides, provides another um, uh, a good thing where you can say, okay, I can select between these uh, predefined options, but I also have the, the possibility to put some in something new. That greatly helps the, the editors too because they have some guidance what they can use and they can also bring in their uh, uh, own things. Or this uh, thing here, multiple selects, they have a way of selecting and ordering in a, in a good combination because you can select the stuff and you also can put this in an order. And you know, one of the things we, we, we have to deal with a lot of times, uh, authors have to set a date when they authored the content. Because sometimes we have these uh, things that get sorted by date and you have to change that in, in some way to uh, rearrange that. This is the most simple <laughs> basic idea of, of something in a, in a view uh, for sorting. But you have to type in uh, a date, maybe in, in some obscure format. So why don't, have we, why don't do, do we have a pop-up here? So there's a module for that that helps you to have a, uh, this little date pop up for your author date. You obviously could go in and, and activate some HTML5 for that, which would also be a good idea, I think. And another thing, you have to prevent uh, the validation failure. People are putting uh, stuff in there. You could put a text there, but we talked about help. You could say, hey, you can, and at Thursdays you can have 235 characters here and because you're doing this and that, but you just could also count the characters and tell the people, hey, you have three characters left. You don't have to count them, count them on their own. There's a module for that, and it really helps uh, a great deal because you don't save the form, wait for PHP and, and, and your Apache server to get, you, get back with the information that you have to put in, you, you put in two, three characters too much. So this is, a, this is also a great topic, uh, or a, a big topic, validation and errors. So from an editor perspective, I want to see my errors fast. And you know, I, want to, I want to know where this error occurred that uh, you know, unfortunately happened. So when, you, when we look at Drupal right now, out of the box, we, we, we provide with these, with these error in this message area, which is, which is okay, but as soon as the, the forms get longer or errors occur in other forms like the, the, um, um, the um, yeah, in other forms like the, 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 the node forms where you connect this, this message area with because it's always on the same page on the top, you never know where you really have to look and find and correct your error. So um, this is the thing that really, that really blocks editors uh, in their way of working with that. And also, this is about client-side validate, client validation. Why should we wait for the, uh, for the reload of the page to see which errors we did? So there's a module, client-side validation, that does its job there. It, it, uh, um, it provides this, the, the same uh, validation um, uh, things that uh, the PHP is providing. And also you can put in HTML elements there to help the, the people prevent um, these errors that might occur because they have an element that is more, uh, more usable intuitively. <laughs> and as I said, you need to see the error messages right where they occur. If you have an error in a comment form, it's not it's not good to have the error in the message area on top of the page because, hey, the, the error co occurred in, in, your, in your comment and not anywhere else. And there your page doesn't have to be scrolling away from the, from the place where you have been editing like a minute or a second before. So there's this uh, uh, a project called Inline Messages that puts the messages uh, um, 
in line to the, to the forms where they occurred. And there's a similar project called uh, Inline Form error, Errors, which is uh, IFE. Yeah, you could look at it. Um, maybe that helps your editors um, to work with these problematic situations. But also, um, um, where it gets complicated, where we have these abstract situations, because filling out a form to get a content that gets placed on a page is, you know, can, ki can be kind of abstract, but as soon as it comes to uh, finding, selecting, and linking content, like linking an image to, an, to a content or linking a user to, so, to, uh, to some content, this, it gets quite abstract and it's uh, a lot that the editors have to deal with. So we should make at least a task to do that after they know they have to achieve this a little bit easier. So in a lot of situations we have these autocompletes, which is great at, uh, up to some point but not always the best solution. So, if we look at that screen here, there's an autocomplete for, uh, for, uh, um, for nodes that you can place into a panel. And you know, you can, you can, t you can start typing and you get titles back, but what, what do you do if there's two, s two uh, identic titles? There's two contents with the same title. Okay, you have a little bit of metadata because it's, this was, the test page was created by admin. But if you don't have so many users, you could run into problems there. Or uh, these uh, uh, results that you're getting there are really limited to a certain amount. I think it's uh, 25 or so. So if there's mere, more results than you can you know, uh, find by typing in, you're also lost. So you need something that uh, helps you there a little bit better. So why not have an autocomplete with metadata? There's this uh, Linkit module that provides uh, a separation, what content types you're dealing with. You can configure, uh, you can configure of, uh, to show the authors, to show the created date. That helps, uh, that helps a lot if, uh, on finding and completing this task. But you can do even more. Um, why not, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is an enhancement of, uh, of the node relation and user relationship uh, field. Often you have, you, you have an autocomplete there, you have to put in a title and you have to link to a user uh, by its username or you have to link to a to an content by its uh, content title. But of, often, um, I said it before when I, when I started this talk, often the, the um, chronological order for the editors, they f it feels reversed because they have to have created the content that they are linking to before they can link to it. So in this situation, it's really nice to have like this here, uh, like the node connect and the node ref these references dialog module. They provide these buttons to say, hey, um, I want to add this what is in there or I want to create something new. In this area, we need to link news so I can create a new news item. So I can write, go in there, start uh, creating something new and get instantly uh, back to my form and have the link to that. So that feels a lot more natural to, uh, to an editor. And the two modules, they are different in, in how they do it. One does it with a, with a modal window and the other one uh, forwards you to the new form and gets you back to the old form. This is, uh, I think, uh, depends on the situation you want to use this, but from the concept, from the concept aspect, this is uh, really an, enhan an uh, enhancement. And another step further would be, you know, having a view to choose your content, like creating a custom view that suits your site, the needs, the, the, the different content types you have there, maybe sub attributes and everything you can uh, use uh, with a views interface here to sele select your content. That was a, a proof of concept that we did there. Uh, um, um, a sandbox module where we uh, work for, uh, for a client. And we just went in there and, and put in a view there with a little bit JavaScript that was got, got rendered into inside the form for selecting the content there. So it's still called the reference dialog? No, this is, this is just, this is just a, a similar area we, where you might uh, think about that. The reference dialog has, has this, this feature of... Yes. Yeah, you're right, you're right. 
So uh, what what uh, what the guy here was saying is uh, with the with the um, references dialog module you can use a similar thing that you can have a view there for uh, for selecting your content, which is really a great thing because there you can really um, configure this that it fits to the site you're building there and fit to the editors in this situation they have to link to the content. So and also um, here we have a screenshot of. Uh, of something where you where you on a on a panels page and you use the the uh, panels uh, the, the C tools uh, content plugins where you want to place an existing content. This was also um, a thing we did uh, for a client. We we went in there. Hey, maybe you just don't want to just link to an existing content that's already there. Maybe you want to create a new panel pane um, with a new content that hasn't been there at this moment because the editor. He, he works on his page and he decides, I want to have something new there. So we um, build on top of that and put in uh, some links, uh, which also use the same model for creating a new uh, layout or a new gallery or a new media item, whatever we had there uh, of content types. And so you can have a workflow that leads from being on the page, uh, putting a, uh, uh, wanting to put a panel pane there, uh, with a content that is not created, do this, uh, finish the task, and have the new content there. A similar project that, that th this is a, a sandbox that we did. You can look this up and try it on your own. But on the other hand, there's also a project that is relatively new. It's called Fieldable Panel Panes that, does this, uh, uh, um, that brings in a new entity, like the, like the uh, custom panes we had before. But you can field them. And that, that also helps in just being in this dialogue, creating a new instance of, of, uh, uh, of such an entity uh, that you provide there. You even can decide if you want to reuse this and find this in a listing of the content, or you want to have just placed it there. So you should definitely have a look at, at that, because this will help also in, in this uh, type of workflow. So. Mm. There's another area where it really, um, where we have a really a little bit problematic situation uh, for the editors, because if they want to deal with a menu, and this is what a lot of uh, editors think, hey, I want to have a new menu entry that leads to a new page. So what they, what do they do in Drupal? They go, they maybe, maybe they know, okay, I can create a content and have you know click this link, add add menu item to that. But most of, the thing, most of the time, the editors think in, OK, I have this menu here, and I want to add a new item with, with its page, or with its content, or with whichever is uh, sit sitting there. So um, when we look at the, at the standard menu interface, it's pretty isolated. We can create an, uh, a menu item, but we have to know the path. So hey, this is not, this is not an easy situation for an editor, because hey, you have to open up another tab to find out the URL or what. So, or you, you can type something like node add. A lot of people type node add and hope it will help them. So you have to know the path. This is not a good uh, situation because, you know, people get stuck in this situation. So um, we were we were sitting down and thinking how how can we make this better and and uh, made some plans for that. And my my uh, colleague Daniel. He started and uh, did this uh, new module that's called Content Menu. That helps with that. You know, it makes uh, it makes it possible to create a new menu item, and that can point to a an URL, or it can you can create a no new content with it, and you get instantly forwarded to the to the um, node edit form to fill out the rest of the fields as far as you want for the content, and then get back to the, uh, to the menu. As you can see here, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit uh, done like the fields UI, where you can have a new entry on, on the bottom, uh, type in the, the title, and then choose if, if you want to have a URL or something else, uh, like a new page, and, or link to an existing content, which also is a, is a nice view, where you can select the content with a configurable view to find that. And that helps the editors to, to get from the start to the end, because they can have a new, uh, new menu item, uh, decide for what they want to have there. They can obviously use what always has been there, the URL. 
They even can create a dummy if they just want to build a menu structure. And that uh, leads uh, to a much, much uh, better workflow in this area. So this is an overview, you know, creating a menu item, deciding for that, getting forwarded to the, to the uh, node add page uh, where everything is already filled out for you, and then getting back to the main menu after saving. And this is a, a, a good, uh, nice and a circular workflow. And same goes for the existing content. Choose existing content, get to your view, select the content, and get back to the main menu. And this is a nice way of dealing with that. So there was a lot of examples. And you know, I, I sort of rushed uh, through the presentation. I almost made it to get, get back in time. Yeah, thank you. Are there any questions? <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, did you check out the menu editor module or compare with content menu? Um, no. Uh, the, the question was if I did check out the menu editor module. Yeah. No, I don't know that. Um, I would really love to talk with you about that. Because uh, I'm always looking for new solutions for, for these uh, topics. I didn't want to provide uh, a really complete overview for, of all modules that help you there. But I w just wanted to tell you what are these tasks, these problems that our editors are facing. And it's really great to have uh, different solutions. So we should sit down. So, so you, how, you how was the, mo the module menu called? Editor. Menu editor. OK. Yeah, so long time Interesting. Yeah, you know, uh, my colleague Daniel, who created the module, is over there. So maybe you could uh, get your heads together. And I don't know, was he here? Uh, maybe he, he has gone. He was here before. But I can point you in this direction. And then you could put your heads together and find uh, common grounds. And, and maybe, you know, uh, work on this a little further. Because I think this is an important task. There was somebody else? No, uh, there's nothing that comes to mind, but here? Uh, I think this content menu actually has a search where you would uh, drill down on the, on, the op on the available menu item. Yeah. You, if you expand on that, you could probably also have a paging or something. But um, I al also, with the menu editor, people ask me for paging. Yeah. But the problem is always that you don't want to cut the menu somewhere in the submenu. Yeah. And then the hierarchy gets yeah. confusing. Yeah. So you better would be instead of paging just to, to reveal a yeah, so uh, um, I think to sum this up, your question was well, how to deal with really long menu structures where you can get an overview. This is obviously a problem. I don't know many good solutions to that. Uh, you talked about a lot of what, what po possible solutions there could be, like you know, paging or uh, um, getting, um, getting this more uh, compact. But sometimes also these approaches to solutions create more problems. I think, you know, you never can, can avoid, you not always can avoid these situations, but maybe there's a, there, there one approach would be consulting the client and telling him, hey, do you really need such a uh, complex menu structure? But, um, you know, this is, this is not a, that's what, that was not the interface answer I could give there. But I think it could be a good approach, you know, because these menu structures tend to also confuse the front end uh, users. But, yeah. So before we had this how to organize your forms, and yeah. you usually use this vertical tab, vertical tab and put almost everything in the vertical tab. And the first one has the, the text and body, yeah. and the rest, they have categorization and other things. Yeah. And for me, this seemed like a good idea, but I never got the direct feedback from the clients because they live somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we, we got feedback from clients, but also there's uh, usability studies. There's a lot of them, and and they show that you know, the the, the compression and the the, the use of uh, of the space 
Okay, we are talking about vertical tabs here, uh, by the way. I have to re repeat all these questions. We're talking about the, the vertical tabs. Uh, so this is nice for, from the, the, the aspect of how much space we use, but the, uh, user st uh, studies showed that people are clicking through all of them to find out what is uh, hidden behind that. I think over there is, a, is somebody who wants to say something about that. Ah, okay. You can go by wood, wood, steps from the soil, wood, wood, steps from the very something steps. I think this yeah. is possible. So that you only have the save button at the end of your form. Mm. Okay, I, I, I try to re repeat all that. Um, there is, uh, there, the, the, you mentioned this problem that you have the save, save button right underneath the vertical tabs and the users get the idea that they have to save everything that they are editing there. And what happens is obviously not the, the, the thing they uh, were hoping that would happen because they get redirected to the save page or anything like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, let me say just uh, one thing before we, we continue with the questions, but uh, I see the people leaving. I will really be happy to talk more with you uh, about that, so let's get together. Uh, we make a buff or we get together somehow and exchange all these uh, ideas, problems with, that we were facing, because I'm also interested in what, ev what every other uh, person um, has to deal with. So uh, find me. And hopefully we can talk about this a little bit more because we are, uh, I don't know, we, run, we might be running out of time. So I'll be here and I'll be really happy to talk with everybody. And yeah, you so. Propose you propose a buff? Yeah, I, actually I don't know how to do this. But yes, I propose a buff, yeah. So um, yeah. I don't know if we find slots or however we do the, the, this uh, logistically, but I think we can, I, I can manage this because everybody else also did it. So, um, yeah, thank you for uh, being here, yeah, and have a nice conference. Welcome to Munich. Yeah.